All right, what's up, YouTube? Y'all already know who it is. Yeah, bro, I made a video. I snatched that shit down with the quickness. Um. Anyway, I'm just going to make this video and just say this, bro. I'm, I like the Falcons draft, bro. Um. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. I like the draft. I think the value for Calvin Ridley at 26 was great. Um, I mean, Deron Payne and Vita was off the board. I honestly didn't want another DT if it wasn't Deron Payne or Vita. So taking Calvin Ridley at that pick, you know what I'm saying, it adds depth to wide receiver. It also gives you three wide receivers that you could put on the field, and all three can play outside. They could play slot. You know what I'm saying? And Julio Sanu and Ridley, you still got Justin Hardy. You know what I'm saying? You got you have Nick Williams, Marvin Hall, and Reggie Davis, who's going to fight it out for that last uh, wide receiver spot. And it gives you a player who you could try to plug in at kick and punt returner since you let Andre Roberts walk. So everybody who was concerned about, oh, we're going to miss Taylor Gabriel, you know, you let Taylor Gabriel go to Chicago. You didn't try to resign him. With the cat room that we had, this is best case scenario to replace a, a player like Taylor Gabriel and just get the, the little extra value in him because, again, Julio not getting much younger, Sanu not getting much younger, so eventually you're going to have to re you're going to have to reinvest in the wide receiver core. So if you can get a player like Kevin Ridley at 26, who a lot of people had as their number one, number two wide receiver on the board at 26, that's great value. Then you go in the second round, and again, you get best player available on the board when you got Isaiah Oliver out of Colorado, the DB. Again, a lot of people had him as their number four, number three, number five, top corner in the, in the draft. So when you get him in the second round and you already locked up corners like Robert Alford and Desmond Trufant, you have Brian Poole, you know what I'm saying? You just signed uh, you just signed Justin from the Cardinals, you know what I'm saying, to give you depth. And now you bring in Oliver, you know what I'm saying? That's added depth that you needed at the cornerback position. The quarterback position was kind of thin. And don't forget, we have Casey who could play cornerback and free safety. He's going to be more of a free safety, but he could still play corner. He played corner, and he played free safety um, last season, especially in that Minnesota game, and he held up well. The defense as a whole held up well in that Minnesota game, given that you was without uh, True, you was without Poole, and you had an injured Rocky playing. They still held up well, so they give you the depth at corner. And then you go, and then you get your DT, a true nose tackle of 311 pounds. I'm quite sure they're going to ask him to drop a little bit of weight since they had Poe play at around like 294, 295. But still, he has – He don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he's going to come in and replace Poe. Don't, don't, don't quote me and say, oh, you said he was going to come in and replace Poe. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is he has the talent and the upside to make it where you don't truly miss Poe. And he has the talent and the upside where you put him next to Grady uh, Jarrett and now you have two defensive tackles, one true nose tackle that can penetrate and play the run on the way to the quarterback. That's never a bad thing to deal with. And don't forget you have Jack Crawford, who Dan Quinn is high on sliding in that defensive tackle on, on, on third downs, on passing situations, and having Jack Crawford, Grady Jarrett, and Tack and Vic on the field at the same time in passing situations. You still have Derek Shelby who can play defensive tackle. Uh, Derek Shelby and Jack Crawford can play defensive tackle and defensive end. I still expect us to get a defensive end, but I understand why the push wasn't there. And yeah, Mo was on the board, but everything around Mo, I see why he hadn't came off the board. Shout out to Oakland because they did draft him. They do have Key, who's, who I wanted Key. I want a key. Oakland got them. Now they have uh, Mo. So, you know, Oakland trying to put something together. I'm not big on Michigan players anyway, so it didn't bother me. But, like I said, I understand. Now, the Edo Smith pick, 50-50 on why. The talent is there. Do not get me wrong. I understand the pick. You have uh, Tevin Coleman coming in his final year, his contract, and Devontae Freeman with the concussions, Teron Ward, I like Teron Ward, but they've been trying to – like like Sean Jay pointed out to me, I got to give credit where credit is due. They've been trying to replace Teron Ward. They tried to do it last year with Brian Hill. 
Brian Hill didn't pan out. He's not even on the roster. I don't even know if he's still in the NFL. Um, so, yeah, they've been trying to replace Teron Ward, but Teron Ward has not left without a fight. And I like Teron Ward. I like what he does. He he can block on third down. You know what I'm saying? He he can run between the tackles. He can run on the outside. But it's Edo Smith, that player that can do all that, plus catch the ball out the backfield, plus be more explosive than Teron Ward. We're going to find out in the preseason. You know what I'm saying? On, on, on tape, on film, he looks like that player. But we're going to find out in the preseason. Um, again, this is all our speculation and what players going to live up to. Will they live up to the hype and live up to everything that people have said and written about them coming out into the draft? Or will they bust under pressure? That's what the draft is. Everybody don't hit on draft picks. We've seen in the past some short fire draft picks that turn out to be busts and some players that teams has overlooked. Tom Brady, you know what I'm saying, Antonio Brown, you know what I'm saying, Devontae Freeman, uh, Keanu Neal, Deion Jones, these players just came and people said, oh, they were reach. They went in the late rounds and they came in and impacted the NFL in, in crucial ways. So only time will tell with everybody draft picks. But so far from round one through four, I like the Falcons draft. Um, I don't have a problem with it. And it is what it is. I mean, if you look at the team, like I said, it adds cornerback Delph, it adds wide receiver Delph. And, you know what I'm saying, you address the need on the defensive line. I kind of knew we wasn't going to go guard. Let's face it, we signed, we signed um, Brandon Fusco f from the 49ers, who played pretty well for the 49ers last year. We signed him to show up that uh, that right guard, guard spot. You got Andy Levitre coming back, and he took a pay cut. Uh, you still like Ben Garland at left guard because he played decent stepping in at left guard when Andy went down. You still trying to develop Wes Swice. So you invest in a uh, guard last year that was on practice squad that you're trying to develop. I wasn't expecting us to go tight end because you're still big on Austin Hooper. You still got Eric that's coming back in his second year. So you're hoping that he shows some of the flashes that he's shown in the small college. So I get the Falcons draft. I understand they offseason moves. You didn't have the money to go out there and re-sign Poe and re-sign Gabriel. And you didn't have the pitch to really throw away the trade for Michael Bennett. You know what I'm saying? So all the moves that the Falcons has made has been smart moves. You were a 10-6 team last year. One play away from going to the NFC Championship game. So... I mean, you really in a position where you could take best player available. You locking up your key players. Your defense is real young. Your offense is still somewhat young, and you're investing young. You're investing picks to make it to help get your offense younger. Because again, like I said, it's new and Julio only getting older. And soon, you know, you can never beat Father Time. So soon, Father Time steps in. So with that said, man, it is what it is, bro. You know, these are just my opinions based on. Facts and logics. I'm not going to get on here and, and give you, you know, uneducated opinions based on what I assume because I'm in my feelings. You know, some people do that. Some people will get on here and give you their uneducated opinion when they can't even name a player in the right position. And they say, it's my opinion because, you know, I'm in my feelings and this is how I feel. Cool. Just don't get mad when somebody corrects you for, again, giving a dumb opinion. I mean, let me get, let, let me, I mean, help me understand. Isn't YouTube and this whole form based on you make a video and somebody gives their opinion to your opinion or comment, critique you, correct you? If you can't take that shit, you shouldn't be making videos. If you're going to cry and bitch about that shit, you shouldn't be making videos. Again, you are the motherfucker who avoided having a man-to-man -man conversation with me. You are the motherfucker who jumped on my Facebook after I did the big man thing and apologized for going in on you on a video. You are the person on my Facebook who apologized and wrote me this long-ass two-message and all this other shit. But when you get on here, you're still calling people losers and people are a fan of your... Bro, you are... You, you are... The like you the epitome of a loser, dog. In actuality, you the epitome of a loser, bro. But it is what it is, man. I'm not gonna get on here and make no video dissing you. I already done that shit, bro. You just a fucking old ass idiot. 
who will continuously get on video and try to make an ass of himself so he can reach the level of certain people like EDP. You know what I'm saying? And it is what it is, bro. I wish you nothing but the best on your nine-year grind to get wherever it is you're going in life. But with that said, man, I'm going to continue to focus on doing what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Push myself to be more successful. Continue educating myself, man, and continue just enjoy life. Yes, today I am a loser. I'm in the house on a fucking Saturday, and I'm cool with that shit. I'm not here to be the face of the Falcon fan base on YouTube. Eventually, YouTube's going to die, and I really don't care. I ain't made a video all season. I just want to talk about the draft, man, because, I mean, this shit is exciting. It's exciting getting new players. It's exciting seeing young players, young men, not even players, young men live out their dreams. Young men who put the time and the effort into grinding, going to classes, going to school, beating the odds, and they finally get to live out their dream. It's exciting to see that, man. So I wish every young man in this draft, whether you get drafted, you come in as an undrafted free agent, however your path goes to live your dream and put on one of these NFL teams logo on the side of your helmet and step on that field and go to practice and do what it is that you've been working so hard to do since you was a little kid, man. Salute to y'all, man. Salute to y'all focus. Salute to y'all grind. Shout out to everybody in the, in, in, in the DVN. And yes, the DVN is bigger than YouTube. You know what I'm saying? The DVN is a Facebook group. The DVN is on Twitter. The DVN makes videos. So shout out to that. Um, shout out to all video makers in the TTC, everybody who put their time and their effort into making videos. Shout out to y'all. I'm watching, man. I, I support it. I watch it. You know what I'm saying? And it is what it is. Shout out to, hey, Matt Mang. I'm going to say this. It's a 12-minute video. I'm going to say this. Matt Mang, I owe you an apology, man, from the deepest and sincere part of my heart. I'm going to reach out to you. I've been needing to do that. Not meaning, but needing to do that because you always reach out to me and I'm very fly on reaching out back and contacting you back and hitting you back. I tell you, I call you back and it never happens. So charge it on the head, not the heart, because I, I be needing to do it. So I'm going to definitely reach out to you soon, man, and, and sit down, man, just have a conversation with you, man, just check on you. Um, but shout out to everybody, man. I hope y'all enjoy y'all Saturday, man. I hope y'all getting the players that y'all would like to have on y'all team. Y'all like to see represent your team, man. But again, this is my thoughts. This is my opinion. You know, I'm not giving you no fucking uneducated saying Keanu Neal play linebacker when clearly he plays safety. I'm not telling you that some player is playing uh, offensive tackle, left tackle, right tackle, and the motherfuckers a defensive tackle. I'm not, you not gonna hear that come from me. I'm always gonna jump on video with research, with facts, and, and with opinions based on what's actually going on. I'm not gonna give you my opinions off of assuming some shit that I can't see happen. I know what opinions is, people, but I'm not the one to jump on the video and give you an uneducated opinion. I just can't make myself look dumb doing that shit. I have to represent myself like I would want anybody else to represent themselves. And that's just at least have a little bit of education about yourself, bro. Don't get on here at 45 years old crying about some shit. With that said, it's 13-minute video. I'm out. Peace.